hashtag Me Too movement may feel like a new phenomenon, but black women have been fighting against sexual harassment since Harriet Tubman was taking glamour shots with a sepia filter. <laughs> sure. Take a look at Hidden Fighters. The media tends to focus only on white women's stories when it comes to issues of sexual harassment. Black women are an afterthought in women's rights issues and racial justice issues. They're right. The faces credited for hashtag MeToo look nothing like the woman who founded it in 2006, Tarana Burke. Tarana created the movement so women could speak out. I got this, Robin. My bad, Miss Burke. Me Too was created for black and brown girls. As a survivor, as a black woman, as a mom, there was not even a conversation about the sexual violence that I saw as so pervasive in our community. But Me Too is just part of a larger legacy of black women's fight against sexual harassment. We've been in these streets since Wade in the Water was on the Hot 100. Just like the sisters behind the space program, it was black women who pioneered our nation's sexual harassment laws. And we weren't just a chapter in this story. We wrote the table of contents, the footnotes, the prologue. We wrote the whole damn book. Before Me Too, before Time's Up, there were other heroes that made sexual harassment what we understand it to be today. P. Perriot Jacobs, an escaped slave whose memoir exposed the sexual abuse that enslaved women endured. And before Rosa stayed parked on that bus, she was an NAACP investigator who helped Reese Taylor, a black woman who was raped on her way home from church. In her day, Rosa had black women covered like cocoa butter in the winter. Fast forward to the 1970s, when Soul Train was the preferred mode of transportation and the term sexual harassment wasn't recognized by law. That is, until Eleanor Holmes Norton electric slid onto the scene. Eleanor Holmes Norton was the very first female head of the EEOC, the Equal Employment Opportunities Commission. She developed the first guidelines to show how sexual harassment was a form of workplace discrimination. I should note, of course, though, that the EEOC guidelines are not mandatory. They're just a suggestion. No, don't note that, because in 1986, another hidden fighter came through. Michelle Vinson was a 19-year-old bank teller. She is harassed relentlessly by her employer. This is a woman who experienced brutality in the workplace. After an eight-year legal battle, Michelle made it to the Supreme Court and came out with a supreme win. Not only is it a time when the Supreme Court is saying sexual harassment is against the law, it's also a recognition of a harm happening to a black woman. That's right, random footage we found of people cheering. Sexual harassment was illegal nationwide, all because of a black woman. Let me stand and be sworn, if you will. But like Juneteenth, it took some time for the word to spread. The 1991 confirmation hearings of Clarence Thomas and Anita Hill's testimony is what educated working women that sexual harassment was against the law. Hill was subpoenaed to speak at Thomas's hearing, and she was accompanied by a legal team with one familiar face. Well, I was a colleague uh, of Anita's in the early 90s, so I went to DC as part of the team to assist in any way possible. Oh, snap! Dr. Crenshaw was inside the courthouse the whole time. He spoke about acts that he had seen in pornographic films involving such matters as women having sex with animals and films showing group sex or rape scenes. Women were incensed at the treatment of Anita Hill. It fueled a tremendous backlash against existing politicians and more women were elected in the next term than had ever been elected before. And with more women in office, I bet the laws followed behind to protect us from all kinds of sexual harassment, right? Legislate. Yeah, not quite. <laughs> For real? Damn, I knew it was too good to be true. I know, I'm sorry, but not sorry, because not all women are protected from sexual harassment and sexual violence. The EEOC only recognizes a workplace as one which has 15 or more employees. Domestic workers don't work in those contexts. I come with many identities. I'm black, I'm queer, I'm immigrant, I'm a domestic worker. Working behind closed doors makes domestic workers especially vulnerable to coward-ass, weak-ass, head-ass predators. 
So as I was in the bathroom uh, assisting him, he reached over and literally grabbed my crotch. It was traumatizing. I needed to pay for medication, I needed to pay my rent. I didn't want to be homeless. So I had to stay until I find, you know, another job. There was nowhere to turn. That's why June and Alicia fight to protect domestic workers with the National Domestic Workers Alliance, which is basically the Justice League, but with more black women. All domestic workers deserve fair wages, protection against sexual harassment. Our work is the work that make your work possible. Respect us. We are working hard towards building the momentum to be able to pass a federal domestic worker bill of rights. If this movement is going to be successful, we can't just focus on the black women who we put on pedestals. We have to think about the women who are everyday workers who we ignore. Black women are leading the fight against sexual harassment. And until the fight is won, we can't stop, won't stop making history. At the end of the day, I'm fighting for all, all women. And I do it with love and a lot of power.